First, should unemployed women be forced to use contraception in return for the doll? Former MP Gary John says it's a way to end intergenerational welfare. But could it do more harm than good? Steve Marshall has been following the story and joins us, Steve. It's a radical plan. Yes, that's right, Layla. Our viewers are going nuts about this on social media and they haven't even seen the story yet. At A Current Affair, we get all sorts of polarising ideas about welfare and the benefit. And even though this idea requires most unemployed women to do all the heavy lifting, not all women are against the idea. And after this segment, you too at home will probably feel compelled to enter the No Contraception, No Doll debate. When she comes off the benefit, she comes off the contraception. No suggestion, I notice, of chemical castration of men on welfare. Interesting that. Only women have to pay the price. Basically, the doctor puts it in your arm and you leave it in there for three years and the entire time you're protected for pregnancy. It's a lightning rod for controversy. What are you oh, no, 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 that's way too invasive. No contraception, no doll. Go on the pill, you girls. Don't get on the, you know, and don't get pregnant and go on the doll or get your partners to go on the doll. And a bold bid to smash the family welfare cycle. Well, why should majority suffer so the minimum can just stay home and do nothing? But does this plan that removes choice from young women have merit? I don't think they should be getting the doll if they're trying to have a kid, basically. Or is it a calculated strategy to control those less fortunate? We let them starve, we let them beg on the street, do we? How does this work? It's the most appalling idea. The demand for unemployed women to use contraception as a condition of receiving their welfare payments isn't new. But now for the first time, we have a solid idea as to just how many Aussie kids are being born into welfare families each year. And it's a frightening figure, one that's thrust the no contraception, no doll debate firmly back under the spotlight. For the first time, we can state that 60,000 children a year are born to a woman when she's on a benefit. And that's 20% of all births in Australia, which is an extraordinary number. So we can't ignore this. Gary Johns is a former Labor minister turned columnist and author. In his new book, No Contraception, No Doll, Johns puts forward his daring argument, compulsory contraception for young women on welfare benefits. If someone is on an unemployment benefit, they should be looking for work, not starting a family. If someone's on a parenting payment, perhaps because they're a single mother, they should be looking after existing children not having more children. And if someone's on youth allowance, they're a very young woman, they should be studying, not starting a family. And this is John's master plan to end intergenerational welfare. Basically, the doctor puts it in your arm and you leave it in there for three years and the entire time you're protected from pregnancy. Long-acting reversible contraception. No pill, just a tiny rod inserted under the woman's bicep. While ever she's on the benefit, she remains on the contraception. When she comes off the benefit, whether she has a job or a uh, new, new relationship, new support, she comes off the contraception. But I would suggest to Gary Johns that it is none of his business how women decide to man manage their reproductive lives. Jane Caro is a social commentator and feminist. Just because women can bear children does not mean we should be treated like children. She's outraged by John's push for compulsory contraception for unemployed females. I'm not prepared to say that every mother on welfare is doing a bad job or will necessarily bring up a child who themselves will end up on welfare. That may well happen and it may be a greater risk, but that doesn't mean we judge everybody the same. Boom! Got it. It's a weekday in a park surrounded by Housing Commission estates. It's where we find unemployed single mum Kayla and her kids. One-year-old Clarissa Jane and Keaton, four. Kayla was 17 and receiving a benefit when she had Keaton. 
but she dismisses the suggestion her life is poorer for it. She insists it's richer, albeit not in dollar terms. Yay. Before I had him, I was very immature. Um, I've done a lot of things that I regret, taking drugs and doing whatnot. No. If it wasn't for having him, I probably wouldn't be here today. Yet Kayla isn't ruling out the idea of compulsory contraception. She says it might better suit girls in welfare families aged 16 and under. Girls at a younger age, I believe, just have it for the fashion sense, just to have an extra add-on to their daily life. Um, because I've seen a lot of girls, young, dress really pretty, makeup done, hair, but their kids are all grubby, they're in dirty clothes and they just have no care. I think nowadays girls are just having kids for the money and to have an excuse not to work. This year, unemployed sole parents with one child under the age of six will receive almost $30,000 from the government. That figure increases to more than $35,000 if they have two children under six. Now, I think women are being used as cash cows. Children are being used as cash cows. Now, it may not be a lot of money. That's not the point. When your life has perhaps lived in poverty and is perhaps in disarray, any money helps. And I don't think we, the taxpayer, should be helping bad decisions. Really? Women are cash cows. We earn, on average, 17% less than men for doing the same work. Hardly sounds like cash cows. Women are having kids for money. Often that's because a lot of girls see no hope of work, no hope in the future. As our welfare bill hurtles towards $190 billion a year, people are divided about the idea of compulsory contraception. I think that that's a great idea because there's too many out there that, are, that keep having kids and um, that they're not working, you know, and keep, just keep on having kids. What do you oh, no, 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 that's way too invasive. That's way too invasive of, of, of a government or, like, anyone to impose on anyone. Yeah, I think it's taking away some freedom from women and their right to choose. Mums yeah, are too like young. Yeah, yeah. Have, they, they have babies now. Their mums have babies. It's like the time they grow up, they, they're working out whether they want to get a job or not. Yeah. So they're more worried about a kid than yeah. getting a job. Well, if they don't have a job and they're on the dole, well, obviously they're not even supporting themselves, are they? How are they supposed to look after a child and provide for a child if they, you know, don't even have a job to provide for themselves? For women to ever accept that as being acceptable is terrifying because it means we become slightly less than human. New Zealand's been subsidising the contraceptive rod for female beneficiaries and their teenage daughters since 2012. But even though it's free, it's not compulsory, and only a small number of Kiwis have had the procedure. That's why Gary Johns is calling for compulsory contraception in return for welfare payments. You take the woman at that point and you say, we can help you through here, have a family, but wait until you've got work. Wait until you have a, a new relationship or a stable relationship, and then your life's your own. You, you plan it as you wish. Jane Caro argues the best early intervention for women on welfare is not stopping them having children, but supporting them better during and after pregnancy. Up skill them in terms of p their parenting skills, support them through their pregnancy. Then, when they give birth to the baby, continue that support. Make sure that there is preschools available and uh, kindergartens and childcare available who can help. This does not cost very much. In fact, we know that for every dollar we spend before a child is uh, in the first few years, will save us seven dollars. Thanks, man. Kayla believes motherhood has given her the best preparation to enter the workforce. She just needs a chance. Being a mum, like, I can do a lot of things. I'm multitask. Like, I honestly do not want to be on Selink at all anymore. I'd love to be able to work. I'd love to be given the opportunity from somebody to expand my experiences. 
Should women on welfare be forced to use contraception? Tell us what you think. Vote in our online poll on the Current Affairs homepage.